Hey, and welcome to the Short Stuff. I'm Josh, and there's Chuck, and there's Jerry out there, and this is Short Stuff. California, here we come, right back where we started from. <laughs> I love California, as you know. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I lived in L.A., but I love Northern California. I think Emily and I have designs on maybe even retiring there one day. Oh, yeah. Maybe. There are what people. Part? I don't know. I mean, somewhere in wine country would be just lovely. Oh, man, that would be so nice. Now, I saw this soap one time called Santa Barbara, and it looks real nice there. No, Santa Barbara's awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what happens with uh, with Ruby. You know, we don't want to – we've kind of pledged to follow her around. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to tell her how great San Francisco is, take her there a lot, so maybe she'll want to end up in San Francisco, mm-hmm. and then we can be nearby in uh, Sonoma or something. Yeah, I'm sure she's going to love that. She's really going to grow up to look forward to being really close to her parents for her whole life. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. She's going to end up a Republican in Michigan. (laughs) Just you watch. Mark my words. Yeah, she does have a Detroit edge to her. (laughs) Nice. So, um, obviously, Chuck, we're talking about California and where the whole thing got its name. Um, And apparently no one fully knows what we're going to talk about is a um, an interpretation that's been around since the 19th century, but it's pretty pretty widely considered as the correct answer. But no one wrote down, like, this is what California is named after. And some uh, earlier attempts to explain it is that it was derived from the Arabic word caliph, as in caliphate. Okay. There's a Greek word called kalos that means beautiful. Okay. Right. And then... Some people said, no, 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 it's after caliente, which means hot, and furnace, which is, means furnace. So California is a hot furnace. And everybody's just like, just go back to bed. Yeah, California's <laughs> like, rather lovely, actually. <laughs> restart this day, man. Um, so there's this guy in, I think, uh, the 1840s or 1850s, who he, he was like a, a amateur historian. He wrote a paper saying, um, uh, this is where I think uh, California comes from. I always said, this is pretty good, man. Yeah, I think this makes a lot of sense. Uh, there was an author named Garci Rodriguez de Montalvo of Seville, mm-hmm. a Spanish writer who wrote a novel called, uh, Am- uh, man, I was doing so good, uh, Amadis de Gaula or Amadis of Gaul. Mm-hmm. And Amadis was, I guess, sort of an action hero of the time, and the book was really big, so much so that uh, Montalvo wrote a sequel to the book featuring the son of Amadis, uh, Lasergas de Esplandian, or The Mm -hmm. Exploits of Esplandian. Mm -hmm. And this is just sort of a setup of these books and a very kind of neat little factoid that lies within. Yeah, like these two books right here were like, Tom Clancy and Michael Crichton all rolled together. Like they were Crichton? huge. I've heard it like that. Is it? They were huge. Is it Crichton? I've always said Crichton, but how, I have who knows? too. Until just a minute ago. Okay. <laughs> but I've heard it I've heard it as Crichton. Let's In say Michael mind? Crichton. How okay. about this? Let's say Tom Clancy and um uh Laura Ingalls Wilder mashed together. Okay. Like that is the level of popularity that these books had in the um, in the early 16th century, like 1510, I think. That's right. Um, and so it, we mentioned the first one because the second one is where California possibly comes from, or the name California comes from, because in Las Sergas de Esplandian, um, the the a lot of the action is the sacking of the town of Constantinople, held then by the Turks, by a bunch of different. Um, countries and nations and armies um, sacking the city together um, as allies. And one of them is a group of basically Amazonian women who bear a striking resemblance to the Amazons that produced Diana, yeah. a.k.a. Wonder Woman. I thought the same thing. But in this case, these um, these women were led, these women warriors were led by uh, Queen Califia. So, yeah, Califia. Yeah. Looks familiar. They were very strong. They had pet griffins, and they fed men to these griffins. So yeah, their their male offspring got fed to the griffins. Pretty cool story, I think. Um, it was like the Scum Manifesto. <laughs> that's right, uh, which you can find in the book, mm-hmm. the Stuff You Should Know book. That is. Mm-hmm. 
so he uh, described their homeland. Apparently, the homeland was called California. And if that's true, then that seems pretty straightforward to me, right? Yeah, it definitely does. But the interesting thing is that's not really the end of the story. There's a lot more to it. And this antiquarian basically said, here's here's basically proof. And I think we'll we'll take a break and then talk about that in a minute. How about that? Sounds good. <laughs> So, Chuck, we were saying that um, in the book, uh, Lysurgus de Esplendian, that they mention that Queen Califia is from California. That's the name of this mystical land where um, there are all these beautiful cliffs. The only metal to be found there is gold. And so yeah. all, of the, all of the warriors under Queen Califia um, wore like golden armor and mm-hmm. um, while they were flying around on their griffins. Um, it was just kind of like this mystical place basically paradise on earth, right? And so yeah. when the Spanish showed up around the time that these books were at the peak of their popularity, um, we can assume that some of them would be familiar with this wildly popular work and the the um, land of California that was described in it. Yeah, and that they might have literally brought these books over. Um, the Spanish believed there's an area south uh, in Southern California, kind of um, like as far south as you can get, mm-hmm. called Baja California. And I think that's actually Mexico, right? Or is that yeah, it, part of California? It is. Well, I think there's Baja California and there's Baja Mexico. And I think there, okay. there's just like the border goes right through it, as far as I know. I've never been down there. Um, I always wanted to, but Emily and I were so broke when we lived in L.A. that we didn't do a ton of traveling throughout California. Uh-huh. Uh, we, we did most of that since we've moved, ironically. But um, Baja California, they thought was an island, just like the island where Queen uh, Califia or Califia lived in the novel. Mm-hmm. And so they called, you know, these European colonizers called it California. Um, they later learned that it was not an island, actually. It's a peninsula. And Baja means Lower California, and then the upper part was named as Alta California. Mm-hmm. Um, not to be confused with what we think of as North, Northern and Southern California. It was literally like sort of what we think of as Mexico and just California. Yeah, and so initially when they came upon Baja, they thought Baja was an island, not a peninsula. They didn't figure that out. So they didn't call Baja Baja California. They just called it California because in the book, California was an island as well, right? Right. But it wasn't until that expedition where they're like, oh, there's this thing just keeps on going um, that they came up with Baja California and Alta California. And then Alta California just became California. That's what everybody calls California now. Right. But it gets a little more interesting, too, because the word California goes back supposedly even further, they think. Uh, This book was written uh, in 1510, but apparently the author of the book based part of it on the Song of Roland, which is a French poem written in the 11th century about Charlemagne in the 8th century. And in this poem, uh, Charlemagne lists a bunch of people that he expected to, like, combat him and come after him and rebel against him, including men of Africa, this is in quotes, men of Africa and those of Califerne. Or Califerne? Either way, C-A-L-I-F-E-R-N-E. Califerne is what the people in the Ozarks call California today. <laughs> Did you Have you been thinking of that joke for the past day? My friend, it literally rolled out nice. of my brain onto right. my tongue. Kudos, kudos. Thank you, thank you. Califerne. So, <laughs> so you've got Charlemagne worried about Califerne, and people say, well, what is Califerne um, in this Song of Roland? And it turns out that at the time when the Song of Roland was popular, um, what would you say, the 11th century, 11th and 12th century, I guess? Yeah, 11th century is when it was written. Okay, so um, people were very, very familiar with the town that was basically called Califerne. Like they were, he was referring to the author of the Song of Roland was referring to a real place in t- what's today um, Algeria, but at the time was considered the Barbary Coast. 
And there was a um, th- there were basically fortified settlements that were called generically Kala or Kalat, and um, they often would be they combine that word meaning like today you'd call it like you know Fort Josh if I founded a fortified town. This is virtually what what we're talking about here. And one of these particular places, actually a very magnificent, seemingly wealthy place, was founded by a warrior named Beni Hamad. Beni Hamad. Not Beni like Benny Hill, B-E-N-I, Hamad. (laughs) And he named, um, he was followed by a group called the Beni Ifrin. And um, now we kind of start to very get to the, the root of where California came from. That's right. But uh, Kala, I think Kala was just sort of a prefix for a lot of different places, right, at the time? Yeah, the, the fortified town. It's like what we would say f- instead of fort, they would they said Kala. Yeah, so Kala Ifrin, uh, which could be sort of loosely looked at as maybe California, uh, that actually crumbled in the 12th century after the Song of Roland, not too long after the Sol- Song of Roland was written. Mm-hmm. And I guess they think, I, I'm, what I don't see is the connection I mean, do you think he lifted that all those years later for his book? That seems a bit of a stretch. Yeah, no, I don't know. I think so. There, this famous, this North African city, Kala Kala Ifrin, um, was very, very famous. Like uh, in Europe, like the Europeans knew all about this. It was almost like um, like a, a city of gold. Almost, it was extremely wealthy. Um, so it's entirely possible that it survived, you know, knowledge of this thing survived a few hundred years or kind of morphed into um, this uh, a, a generic term for like a paradise on earth. Oh. So like this guy might have just grabbed this term possibly without knowing its origin. But then what's interesting is that got morphed into the state of California and everybody forgot that origin too. So it's basically a famous North African city was cited in the Song of Roland, which ended up in the La Sergas de Esplandian, which ended up as the name for California, as far as we can tell. I love it. I buy it. I do, too. I'm buying it big time. I'll buy it twice on Sunday. Uh, And since I said that, everybody, short stuff is out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 